Let's begin by taking a closer look at 10 to the power of 21. As you can see, this is a 22-digit number. This means that all integers between 1 and 10 to the power of 21 will have at most 21 digits. Now for the purposes of this question, we're going to say that all numbers in this range will have exactly 21 digits. And we'll do this by including several leading zeros of a number. So for example, we can write 10,100,000 as a 21-digit number by including several leading zeros. Similarly, we can write 20,000 as a 21-digit number. Now for a number to have the sum of its digits equal to, we need to consider two possible cases. Case 1 is that we have two ones in our number and then 19 zeros. Case 2 is that we have 1, 2 and 20 zeros. Let's examine case 1. How many 21 digit numbers are such that we have two ones and 19 zeros? Well, we have 21 spaces altogether, and we need to choose two of them to place our two ones. Once we do that, we'll fill up the remaining spaces with zeros. Well, if we have 21 spaces and we need to choose two of them, we can accomplish this in 21 choose two ways. When we apply our formula, we see that we have 210 numbers that satisfy the condition in case 1. Now on to case 2. How many 21-digit numbers have exactly 1, 2, and 20 zeros? Well, we have 21 spaces altogether, and we need to choose one of them to place our 2. We can accomplish this in 21 ways. So the total number of 21-digit numbers that satisfy either cases 1 or 2 will be equal to 210 plus 21, which equals 231. So our answer is E. Given that the length of each side of a quadrilateral is a distinct integer and that the longest side is not greater than 7, how many different possible combinations of side length are there? So first of all, the possible side lengths are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So it can't be greater than 7, but we have to pick 4 from any of those 7. So naively, we might think what we're going to do is 7 choose 4, and this is certainly a good start. How many different combinations of 4 can we choose from 7? 7 choose 4, and of course this is going to be 7 factorial over 4 factorial times 7 minus 4, which is 3 factorial. That's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial, which cancels this 4 factorial, and 7 times 6 times 5 over 3 factorial, which is 6, that cancels. And so then we get 35. And you would think that 35 would be the answer. You might think that if you're just relying totally on the formula. And if we were asking just the question in the abstract, take these seven numbers, how many were any seven objects, how many different combinations of four can we pick, then 35 would be the answer. But we have to think about the geometry also. Are all 35 of those going to be possible? And the answer is no, because they're size of a quad quadrilateral. Well, a quadrilateral is a closed thing. And so think about the size of a quadrilateral. Suppose we had a length of seven, but we have the longest side. And suppose we pick the three shortest numbers, one, two, and three. Well, one, two, and three, that wouldn't be long enough. The, no matter how much these three short sides stretched, they could not equal the, the length of that long side. And so it's a problem, first of all, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is less than 7, so that's a problem. It's also a problem if the three shortest sides equal the longest side, because then you'd have a flat thing. You'd have something stretched flat instead of having a quadrilateral, which is actually something that has to enclose area inside it. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6, or 1 plus 2 plus 4 equals 7. These would be the three cases that are prohibited. Okay, once you get larger numbers than these, then you can have a side of 6 or 7. And of course, any three numbers added together are going to be greater than 5, so that's not going to be a problem for any of the 
the, the smaller sides. So these are the only three that are prohibited. So we have to subtract these three prohibited cases and we get 32, the legitimate number of sides, answer choice C. To begin, let's find the prime factorization of 210. Now, when looking for numbers such that the product of their digits is equal to 210, we need to consider three possible cases. Case one is that we have a four-digit number consisting of a 2, a 3, a 5, and a 7. In how many ways can we arrange these four digits to create different numbers? We can do this in four factorial ways. Now notice that we can combine our 2 and 3 in our factorization to get a 6. So in case 2, we're going to look at three-digit numbers that consist of a 5, a 6, and a 7. The total number of ways we can arrange these three digits is 3 factorial. And finally, case 3, we're going to look at four-digit numbers that consist of a 1, a 5, a 6, and a 7. We know that there are 24 possibilities that suit this criterion. So altogether, we need to add the number of possibilities from each of our three cases. When we do so, we get 54 different numbers. So our answer here is D. All right. 12 points are spaced evenly around a circle, lettered from A to L. Let N be the total number of isosceles triangles, including equilateral triangles, that can be constructed from three of these points. A different orientation of the same lengths counts as a different triangle because a different combination of points form the vertices. What is the value of N? All right, this is a pretty wordy problem, but let's, let's boil it down to its basics. This is asking us, how many isosceles triangles can I draw with three of these 12 points? So I, I could sit here and count up every single possible isosceles triangle, but I, I don't have the time or the doodling ability to do that. So instead, since all of these points are evenly spaced, why don't I just take one case and extrapolate it to the others? Maybe let's, let's start with A. Why not, right? How many isosceles triangles can I draw from A? Well, I could start with ABL. That's an isosceles triangle. How do I know, by the way? Well, the points are evenly spaced, right? So this distance has to be equal to that distance, since A is evenly spaced from L and A is evenly spaced from B. How many other isosceles triangles can I draw from A? Well, I could do ABL right there. I could do ACK. I could do ADJ. I could do AEI, and I could do AFH. And so that is how many? One, two, three, four, five isosceles triangles I was able to get from A. And the problem told me that a different orientation of the same lengths counts as a different triangle. So I'm not done counting. I need to do this for every single point. Well, how many points do I have? I have 12. So it's 12 times 5 should give me 60. And unfortunately, that's not the correct answer. But if you got that far, then give yourself a pat on the back. Because there's one last item that we need to consider. Now, it's, it's true that uh, different, what does the problem say? Different orientation of the same lengths count as a different triangle. But it's not saying that we can count the same triangle multiple times. Well, did we do that? Yes, we did. And here's where we did it. So let's zoom in on one of these particular isosceles triangles we drew. AEI is an isosceles triangle, but it's also an equilateral triangle, right? The distance from A to E, again, evenly spaced, one, two, three, four points, is the same as the distance from E to I, evenly spaced, four points, one, two, three, four, is the same as the distance from I to A, another four points, one, two, three, four. So that's an equilateral triangle. Again, this might seem confusing since they say, you know, a different orientation of the same length counts as a different triangle. They are not saying that you can count the same triangle multiple times. The triangle AEI is the same triangle as the triangle EIA. So let's let's start subtracting from our total. We calculated that there were a total of 60 isosceles triangles, but we overcounted right? We counted some of these equilateral triangles multiple times. So before we go any further, let's just point out, right? It has to be fewer than 60 since we're going to be subtracting from here. So it can't be 60. 
It can't be 72 and it can't be 120. That means that it has to be A or B. So we're down to a 50-50. All right, now let's let's get to answering this exact question. How many times did we overcount equilateral triangles? Well, when we did all of our um, all of our triangle drawing from A, we counted this equilateral triangle here, and then we also counted it when we did that from E, and then we also counted it when we did it from I. So we should have counted this triangle only one time, but we counted it three times. In other words, we counted this triangle two extra times. So to be fair, we need to subtract two. How many times overall did we do this? Well, we did it with the points B, F, J. That's an equilateral triangle. So we need to subtract another two from this. And then we did it with the points C, G, K. So we need to subtract another two. And then we did it again with the points D, H, L. There it is, another two. So we don't have 60 triangles. In fact, we have 60 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2, which comes out to 60 minus 8, so 52. And 52 is the correct answer here.